Hello, Sunmares, and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng, and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 12.21. One of the most important things in a constantly evolving game like League of Legends is to be able to adapt with the meta, and that's why we're here for you. If you know what's going to be OP before the patch hits, you'll be ready to hit that ground running without having to test if that one buff or nerf really made that much of a difference. And if you don't know how to play any of these OP picks, or you're just a little bit rusty, this will give you a few days to brush up on them in some normals or on a smurf. Before we get started, I just want to say that this list is not in any particular order. It's just a list of champions that we predict will be some of the strongest, most influential picks on this patch. And one last thing before we jump into things, I want to give a quick shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7, just ready to share everything that they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. Now let's look at our predictions for what's going to be OP. We'll be starting things off with Tristana. She has been on our radar as an up and coming pick for quite a while now. We even recently just moved her up to the OP tier in our most recent tier list update. We talked about how Tristana was already rivaling Miss Fortune as the top marksman in the bot lane, and with MF now being nerfed this patch, Triss may be the definitive winner. She's perfect for absolutely demolishing the enemy bot lane, but unlike other kill lane ADCs, she is not totally feast or famine. I mean, snowballing is obviously just going to be way better, but Tristana is fine coming out of laning phase neutral or even a little bit behind. That's because she's also super strong scaling carry, with arguably the safest late game team fighting of any marksman. Her high range, resetting jump, and knockback makes her a super self-sufficient pick, so you should never feel caught out if you're even halfway decent at positioning. Our second pick is Mordekaiser. Not only has he been super broken in all three topside roles for pretty much the entire season, his rivals are being nerfed up there as well. Specifically, all the best top and jungle picks have been hit with the nerf at some point, while Mordekaiser remains OP as always. He's a super easy to use champion, so he may be a good idea to throw into your champ pool for the end of the season push. Another super strong jungle option that has been pretty easy to play is Udyr. Ever since his VGU, Udyr has been a little bit of a wrecking ball in the jungle. At first, it was the same AP tank build that made Shivana so successful this season, but after some adjustments, he's also played as an AD bruiser with some assassin tendencies. His ability to flex between builds meant that he's very easily able to fit into any comp. He's also strong at all stages of the game, so you don't have to worry about either being bullied early or falling off late. Way back on 12.12, .12, Heimerdinger got some buffs that turned him into a multi-world monster, and for whatever reason, neither Riot nor the vast majority of players really seem to care. He's a super strong pick in every role except for the jungle. Yes, even support where he pretty much functions just like Zyra. He's even played at Worlds. Heimerdinger used to be looked at as a troll pick in pro play, so if this doesn't validate him, I don't know what will. If you were to make a list of the most elo-inflating champions in the game, Fiddle6 would be very likely at the top. This isn't an exaggeration. Even with the easiest of enchanters, you still have to play the laning phase, and there's always a chance of feeding hard or just being useless and putting your ADC far behind. But with Fiddle6, you just AFK farm your jungle, ult when you have it, then rinse and repeat. That's pretty much all there is to it. Since we're talking about the big elo inflators, I think it's also time to recommend Janna. It's definitely worth distinguishing the good Jannas and the okay ones. Yes, despite what the vast majority of players think, there is actually a lot of skill involved in playing Janna. But even if you just play her kind of meh, she's insanely impactful, giving out tons of heals, shields, and AD in fights, while also being able to completely shut down engage attempts. Another enchanter that absolutely just brings feel to those that abuse her is Seraphine. Of course, we're talking about Seraphine as a bot lane carry. She's okay as a support and a mid laner, but when you play her as a bot lane carry, your chances of winning go up by a lot. That's because Seraphine needs a lot of items to actually fully come online, but once you do, it becomes extremely difficult for any enemy comp to deal with how much enabling it you do for your team. If you prefer to be a bit more active early on, maybe Singe is the pick for you. When you play Singe, your entire plan is to cause as much mayhem as possible. What this means depends on which role you're playing. In the more traditional top lane, that typically means proxying and wasting the enemy top lane and jungle's time. But in the mid lane, he's even more frustrating to deal with. Since the lane is too short to proxy in, instead you just shove in and perma roam, harassing the enemy jungler or ganking for your other laners. In the later stages of the game, you want to be a chaotic force in team fights. You're never really fighting with your team, instead you're just kind of doing your own thing, zipping in and out of fights. The problem your foes face at this point is that you're actually too tanky to really burn down, but you also do too much damage and disruption to just ignore. Singe is definitely one of the most tilting champions in the game. The classic don't chase a singe rule has existed for over a decade now, and people still play right into the hands out of frustration. Sometimes league games are really decided by mental warfare. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What champion do you find the most tilting to play against? Let me know your answers in the comments down below. And now without further ado, let's get back on topic, shall we? Next up, we have Amumu. Amumu may be one of league's oldest champions, but he feels anything but outdated. As a support, he's a deadly killing champion with tons of base damage and CC to provide. He's super scary post six since you can chain a QRQ combo to just about solo out a squishy target all on your own. 
In the jungle, he's even better in our opinion. All that aforementioned CC makes him great at early ganks and setting up team fights later. But with the gold and XP of a jungler, Amumu is more than just a tank. With how much damage he puts out, he's more like an AP juggernaut. It's not a stretch to say that Amumu can easily solo out the enemy backline if they don't have a ton of peel or a champion that shreds tanks. After an unintended bug left Ramus in a pretty mediocre spot back on 12.19, his 12.20 buffs helped put him on top. Now he's way more than just okay. That was my Ramus impression. <laughs> Ramus' entire point of existing is just to pick people out with this taunt. Early on, it's how you execute ganks to get the rest of your team ahead. Later, you convert picks on the enemy into free objectives, and sometimes it's even enough to push to win. If that style fits you, definitely give him a spin. Or roll with him. The next champ that we'll be looking at is Shen. He's pretty much been OP or SR for all of this season. In fact, I don't really remember a time when he wasn't. The thing is, no matter where the meta is, Shen is always just a good champ, really. His ability to dodge autos makes him great at shutting down bruisers, while dealing percent based damage gives him good dueling against juggernauts and tanks. Aside from being a good 1v1 champion, he also opens up the team for better macro play in the mid and late game stages. It's pretty simple. If the enemy team ignores you while you split, you just take turrets. If they come to get you, you ult your team and force with the numbers advantage there. If Shen's slow and steady macro game isn't for you, and you just want to really brute force your way to every victory, then maybe Pantheon is more your speed. When it comes to lane bullies, no one does it like him. Whether it's top or mid, he has next to no losing matchups. He's not exactly a new release, but people still get super surprised by just how much his combos can do. And he can often net some easy solo kills as early as level 2. That said, it's definitely a good idea to bring Ignite on him no matter what the matchup is, for maximum snowball potential. After getting even just a little bit ahead in lane, you should find it pretty easy to start taking over the game. If your laner starts respecting you too much, and you're not going to be able to get any kills off of them, look for a roam and bully the rest of the map. Not too long ago, Zach was doing insanely well in every role but bot lane carry, being in the OP tier on our list for all four other roles. After a bit of the meta shifting around, he's fallen off just a tiny bit in the jungle and support roles, but he's still easily broken enough in both solo lanes to deserve a spot on this list. He's super hard to bring down in fights, does ridiculously high damage for a tank, and can engage from any angle as long as you have good vision control. Next up, we have Neela. I remember when she first came out, we predicted that Neela would be doing way better in higher elo than the middle and lower ranks, and we were actually pretty wrong. She's already been tearing it up in those levels since her release, and now that MF, one of her strongest rivals, is being nerfed, she's a contender for the best bot lane carry pick. She definitely has a bit of a learning curve, being a melee carry in the bot lane and whatnot, however, once you learn how to play her early game out, she's an insanely strong carry. Finishing things off, we have Maokai. Despite being nerfed multiple times in a row, Maokai is still an insanely strong support and jungler. The thing is, all those nerfs that they gave him didn't really tackle what makes him so good in those roles. As a top laner, missing out on all that healing from his passive makes him way weaker in a side lane later on, so he's definitely feeling it there. But as a support or jungler, his main appeal is his ability to make picks with a point and click CC, and being able to be super disruptive in team fights later on. And that wraps things up for our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 12.21. Thank you guys so much for watching, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure you subscribe so you never miss out on content like this. And remember to let us know your pick for the most tilting champions to play against in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description below, where you can discuss anything further, or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.